Was Eve the first scientist in the Bible? Eve, scientist, what are you talking about? Uh, a little bit about the series. An atheist asks, I was uh, formerly a Christian, now I'm an atheist, uh, but I still have a lot of questions. So instead of putting up a kind of, kind of typical thing where it's like, ask an atheist, I, I, lots of people can ask atheist questions about a lot of things. But it's really hard for me to get like questions about things that I've, it's more difficult to get answers to really weird questions that I have having been a Christian and now not being a Christian anymore. I actually think Eve was the first scientist in the Bible. And I think men over history, Christian history, have been really dissing her when they should be thanking her for showing them the way. Yeah, that's right. I said it. Showing you the way. Yeah, that's right. I said it. Showing you the way. So let me explain first how men have been disrespecting Eve. And then I'm going to claim her. And if Christians don't want her, I will claim her for science, right? Because she, to me, is basically like the first scientist in the Bible. She might be the only scientist in the Bible. And for that, she has my respect. So let's hear some of the smack people have been talking about Eve. And I'm going to start with Tertullian. The second century, yeah, about second, third century, Christian father writing in Africa. Basically, he's writing this for all women but also for men to hear, so they really know who to blame for all the shit that's been going down and going wrong in the world, right? Everything down to women. Speaking to women, do you not realize that Eve is you? The curse God pronounced on your sex weighs still on the world. Guilty, you must bear its hardships. You are the devil's gateway. You desecrated that fatal tree. You first betrayed the law of God. You who softened up with your cajoling words, the man against whom the devil could not prevail by force. The image of God, the man, Adam, you broke him. It was child's play to you. You deserve death and it was the son of God who had to die. <sighs> What did Eve do to deserve that? But before we do that, let's get our concepts in order. What is a scientist? Well, you can say that scientists didn't really exist until after the scientific revolution. But if we take the principles of science, then we can really start to look at a more general approach, right? You can call a scientist as someone who, in a broad sense, is one who engaged in a systematic activity to acquire knowledge. I got that from Wikipedia, so it's gotta be true. What do we mean by knowledge, though? Well, let me go back to Wikipedia. Knowledge is familiarity, awareness, or understanding of someone or something, such as facts, information, description, or skills, which is acquired through experience or education by perceiving, discovering, or learning. So we're gonna look at the story of the fall of, and see whether or not Eve has engaged in the scientific process, if she has engaged in systematic activity to acquire knowledge. Now, the way that I'm gonna set this up is to basically say, from a scientific perspective, Eve had two theories. She had two competing theories that predicted different outcomes. And what does she do to, to figure out which of those theories is correct? Well, first remember that Eve doesn't have a name. I want to thank the Bible Reloaded for pointing this out to me because we tend to call her Eve retrospectively, but really in this passage where we're going to be talking about her, she's just a woman. Verse 8. <laughs> Then the man and his wife heard the sound of Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? So God was strolling through the garden, whistling a tune to himself, just, I wear my sunglasses at night. Uh, just fucking walking. What a cool the, guy. This is the literally the first time and probably the only time in the Bible that God seems like a cool hipster. <laughs> just walking through, checking out nature, like giving the like finger guns as he goes. Boop, 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 boop. What's up, porcupines, Velociraptor? What's going on, <laughs> guys? Unicorns and dodo birds. You guys see Adam and nameless woman I made? <laughs> What does it say in Genesis 2.15? I'm using what's called the mechanical translation of the Bible. It's an attempt to take the ancient Hebrew and translate it directly, directly and consistently into English. So the phrases in the text I'm gonna use might seem a little awkward, but that's because there's no abstractions in here. It's all concrete language. Um, if you prefer a different translation, please feel free to follow along in your own translation. Genesis 2.15. And Yahweh the Elohim took the human and deposited him in the Garden of Eden to serve her and to safeguard her. The garden being the feminine there. And Yahweh the Elohim directed upon the human, saying, From all the trees of the garden you will surely eat. 
but from the tree of discernment of function and dysfunction you will not eat from him given in the day you eat from him you will surely die we all know i think pretty well enough that um, the tree of good and evil here because again the translation doesn't have abstractions function is just basically it does what it says in the tin right you make people like god makes people and they work or god makes people and they don't do what they're supposed to do they function or they dysfunction and he's saying that in the day in the day you eat from the tree you will surely die now uh we kind of fast forward into chapter three and i don't have the number of the the passage here but uh i'll put it up on the screen and the serpent had existed as a subtle one more than all the living ones on the field which Yahweh the Elohim had made. And he said to the woman, Did Elohim really say to you, You will not eat from all the trees of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, From the produce of the trees of the garden we eat. But from the produce of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, Elohim said, You will not eat from him, and you will not touch him. Otherwise, you will die. No, 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 what? Touch him? That's not in the first passage. It's just in the day that you eat from him, you will surely die. So from Adam, there's been some kind of miscommunication as to what exactly uh, the rules are. Can you touch it? Or is it okay to touch it, but you can't eat it? Well, Eve's got this theory, all right? So she's got one account from Adam, and now she's going to get a second account from the serpent. And the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die, given that Elohim knows that in the day you eat from him, then your eyes will be open and you will exist like Elohim, knowing function and dysfunction. What? Right? You're not going to die. You're going to actually gain even more knowledge. You're going to become wise. You're going to, you know, when God says something's good, Eve can't make that same judgment call. Why? Because she doesn't know function from dysfunction. But now, with this fruit, apparently it, it increases brain activity, uh, she will be able to make these sort of discernments. So, she's got two theories. She's got Adam's account, she's got the snake's account. What does she do? I think most people would say Eve should trust Adam because that came from God and God is all-knowing and all-powerful, but of course Eve doesn't, in theory, have knowing what's function and dysfunction, knowing what's good and what's not good. She relies on her experience, on her own wisdom and inference skills, uh, and, and her own ability to make a judgment call. You have to say, for not knowing function and dysfunction, actually she's functioning pretty well. Because let's see what she does. And the woman saw the function of the tree is for nourishment. She steps back and goes, does this tree look like it's poisonous? Looks like it's gonna kill me? No, actually, looks pretty good. Next she says, and that the tree, or he, is a yearning to the eyes. Right? What does this mean in terms of the text? The fruit itself is presenting itself in a way that's very pleasing. And finally, the tree is a craving for making calculations. I love this, this, this phraseology. The tree is a craving for making calculations. The tree is going to inspire you to understand the world. Now, as the Bible Reloaded guys pointed out in their Genesis YouTube Bible study on this, Gandalf and Dumbledore would love this tree. <laughs> Any man with a long, flowing white beard. But if God didn't want him to ever eat that, why would he give them the following three attributes? Good for food, pleasing to the eye, and desirable for gaining wisdom. <laughs> Those are the three best attributes for any tree ever. Any tree that we have today only has two of the three. I don't think apples look delicious. Well, bananas. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Kirk Cameron, asshole. Fucking... <sighs> if you went to the supermarket and it made you smarter every time you ate a certain food, wouldn't you want to eat it all the time? I know I would. Um, basically, there are no downsides. There's no warning sign, there's no, you know, X, and there's no, you know, X with skull and crossbones. Nothing, everything about this tree, from Eve's experience, tells her it should be a positive thing. She basically engages in experimentation. If we go on to read the text, it says, she took his protos, she took the protos from the tree. She should have died, according to Adam, right? This should have killed her, but she didn't die. So the next thing she does is she eats it and she doesn't die. Now, you can go on and say that her eyes were opened and they found out they were naked and now they were gonna have to leave the garden. I'd rather be free and die than 
a slave for eternity. I know that that's my own call, so I don't want to push that on there, but really in terms of if we go back and we look at it and from a scientific point of view, then we can see that, yeah, actually Eve has a system for gaining knowledge, right? She evaluates the tree, she evaluates the fruit, she evaluates a potential consequence. She considers Adam's idea of what might happen and the snake's idea of what happened, and she decides to experiment and find out herself. I think that's amazing. In fact, I can't think of another person in the Bible who does that. Figure, I can figure this out for myself. It's not that hard of a question. And I like that spirit about Eve, and I'll defend that spirit for Eve. Uh, so Christians, if you don't want her, bring her on. I'll take her. Science will have her. This has been An Atheist Asks. Thanks for watching. Uh, Kirk Cameron, asshole. Fucking...